In our last video, we built a D-type register. We built a module that implemented the register functionality itself. So I, the next step uh, would, would be to take our register and try implementing two registers together connected via a data bus which you know means taking the output from each register and connecting it to the data bus and then demonstrate enabling uh, one or the other and seeing the output come out on the data bus and then of course also you know doing a register transfer uh, being able to output value on from one register onto the bus and then um, setting the input enable on this one to be able to read the value. Well, I went on, I went about doing that. And in a prior video, I had mentioned something in passing that some of the documentation that I read said that you can't implement high Z internally in an FPGA. And that's really what, you know, this signal right here does is that it lifts the output from this to a, to a high Z mode. Well, it didn't really occur to me. Well, yeah, let's let me get, let me go about it this way. So, so this is what I attempted to implement in the top module in order to try to uh, implement this functionality. So let's just think about this for a minute. So I created a signal called data bus, instantiated both of my registers, and then set the data bus equal to the output Q from each one of the registers. Well, if you think about what this means in Lucid, what this means is that the value of data bus or the, the state of data bus is always going to be regb.q. There's no construct in the Lucid language, or maybe it's Verilog, I, I'm not 100% sure, but in any case, if you specify this in code, you will never get the value of reg A uh, onto the data bus. You'll only get this register. So that's a problem. So it occurred to me that maybe a way to solve this problem might be something like this. So take away the tri-state buffers and instead replace them with a multiplexer. And the way this works, you've got the output of each one of your registers going to an input of the multiplexer. And then you have a select line that tells the multiplexer which output to put through to Q. So in this case for register A, if the select line is zero, then registers A, register A's output gets asserted onto the data bus. And then likewise, if the select signal is a one, then register B's signal gets asserted onto the data. And, you know, this uh, implementation here, I think is, is how you have to um, arbitrate signaling uh, on an FPGA. But what does what does this multiplexer look like? This is the output from register A. That's what this first signal is. This is the output from register B. And this is the select signal. So let's, let's uh, demonstrate this first, and then we can talk about how it works. So when register A's output goes high, because our select signal is a zero, uh, we get the result out on our data bus from register A. If this goes zero, then our output becomes a zero. If we flip the select signal now down to one, register B is what's asserted on the data bus. So I click that and I get a one and, and a zero. So how does this work? Well, there's an inverter that the um, input of which is hooked up to this select signal, and then the output goes to this AND gate. So when this signal when the inverter is low, the output is high. 
opening up whatever is asserted from register A's input to be passed through to this OR gate here. When, the select, when this select signal goes high, then we're using the input to this, this uh, second AND gate to control whether or not whatever comes through this signal gets passed through. So, you know, this basically becomes the multiplexer circuit that we're going to use to implement a data bus component.